Hello and welcome to today's cryptocurrency technical analysis where we are going to be going over the major move to the downside that we are seeing but on this smaller term time frame this short squeeze that is happening right now as we're speaking. Uh, so I want to talk you through the current short squeeze where we can be looking to take this up to. Is this still bearish overall and this is just a short squeeze to get better short entries before trading it much lower. Uh, so I'll be giving my opinions on this and uh, yeah I hope that you really enjoy this video. Let's begin with the technical analysis. So Bitcoin it has obviously been in a major downtrend for the past. Let's give it exactly exactly 11 days and 16 hours. We were in a very much downtrend making continuous lower highs on the Bitcoin chart. Okay, the whole trend over the past few weeks was just categorized by lower highs. We have finally broken that when we took out around that 51 well, let's just say $51,000, we have broken out of that at least local downtrend with the you know, 15 minutes to, you know, one hour lower highs. So that has now been broken. So we can say that that is a bullish sign. Now that's that's uh, one piece of the puzzle needed for a, for a bullish sign. Okay. We still have major resistance above us, but that is a pretty good sign that at least we've got that initial push up. Of course, it has been on a short squeeze, massive declines in open interest. We cannot really consider this a bullish move per se, at least not yet, um, but at least the lower highs have been broken. <laughs> so that's that's what, what that's the first thing I'd uh, point, point out. The second thing that I would point out here is what happened at this low? Like, you've got to think here, what, what was what happened here? that caused such a big move to the upside. Why did you get so many shorts squeezed here at this at this level of $47,000? Well, there's a few factors that you have to bear in mind. Factor number one is we were also looking at this. You had that symmetrical triangle that was going on on the Bitcoin chart. No, so you had the symmetrical triangle, which obviously broke to the downside. So what's generally happening when you have a pattern very obvious. We have to remember that was an obvious pattern. What's generally happening when those patterns break down? Okay, a lot of people will be trading the breakouts of the shorts, which fair enough. I think if you traded the breakdown of this one, it actually worked out pretty well as you, you did take the lows. So as long as you were not trying to trade the breakout overall, I think you would have made money on the short. But nevertheless, the thing that's really gone on at the low here that caused such a short squeeze was a swing failure pattern. So when we add this on to look at the lows. We can see we come down, we take the low close back above. This is known as the SFB swing failure pattern. As I'm always going to say, it's one of the easiest trades you can ever take. It is just a very, 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 very easy trade. Okay. But there's one thing that you have to bear in mind with swing failure patterns is that you cannot necessarily pre predict them. Okay. So you can have an ideas, but you cannot really, um, you, cause the, the reason why you cannot really, um, predict them per se is because it's all about volume so it's all about how much volume you get you get trapped so you want to see a lot of you basically just want to see heavy volume at the lows no that way when you close back above the level where exactly what happened last night you have a you just have the setup activated and that is exactly what we saw last night we saw heavy volume selling down into the lows close back above and well swing failure pattern then is activated yeah it's activated and then well we're Short squeezes started. I'll, I'll show you this. Yeah, I'm sure you're interested. So let me let me show you what the volume looked like. So here we go. You see, coming down into the low, that was in in this period at, at the lows, 634 million, 420 million, 512 million volume down at the lows. The actual candle on the breakdown, we had about minus 22 million. You can see here at the low, while the swing failure pattern is happening. 30 million shorts, 14 million shorts, 3 million, 9 million, 5 million. You know, let's just say a lot of shorts <laughs> were coming in at those lows, yeah? And then so naturally here, we've seen a very big short squeeze off the back of that. So that's just the first thing that I want you to remember. It's, it's all about the volume. It's all about the volume and it's reacting as it's happening. Okay, so you have to have that confidence to take the trade as it's happening and you get rewarded. Okay, because so I do think you're in it kind of, it's kind of like this position, yeah? You what you Maybe you really wanted to long Bitcoin. That was the time to long, like longing it back up here. It's, it's not a good long, let's be honest. And this is the thing, if you, if you don't have that confidence to take the trade when it's really, really good opportunity, like that was an amazing opportunity. You kind of left now thinking, do I even have a trade here again? I, I mean, arguably... 
you know, I'm going to say arguably not because this is the thing with Bitcoin. You, you, you've given maybe one or two trades a day at the moment, which we call like really nice trades. You're given maybe one or two. And for the rest of the day, you're literally waiting for that, for that entry. So, you know, when you're given the entry, if you don't take it, then you're going to, you're going to be sat there thinking, you know, kicking yourself, I think, kicking yourself maybe. Um, I'd like to show you uh, a prediction that I made. Uh, this is what I'm saying. This is from my personal trading journal. And it's not every day that I share my trades from my personal journal. But this is what I was after. I was looking for myself a swing failure pattern of the low before a short squeeze to the upside. I have a guess what happened on this one. If we just <laughs> compare the two. Surprise, surprise. It's kind of exactly what happened. But we got the move down. We swing failure pattern the low short squeeze to the upside. We come down, swing failure pattern, the low, short squeeze to the upside. I want to give you a little bit of thought process of why I was why I was kind of thinking this at the time. Well, there was a few different factors. Yeah, there was a few different factors that we had here. We obviously had the cypher harmonic. <laughs> Basically, I can just list these things because everybody in my group was looking at it. So we had the cypher harmonic. We had the 47k support zone. We had the NPOCs, of course, once again, bottom of the cipher pattern. So we're talking about four or five different add-on swing failure pattern, arguably the biggest one. The biggest reason for me was the swing failure pattern. I'm not going to lie. But, you know, we had about four or five different reasons. You, you add on top of those swing failure pattern, bam, it's like, it's a good scalp trade for me at the very least. Yeah. So for me, it's, it's a trade which was taken as a scalp, ends as a swing. Okay. Uh, I'll talk you through a little bit of theory. I want to try and offer as much value in this video because I, you know, why not? Um, so let me show you this. So I started to try and trade that swing failure pattern. And please just go check the timestamps. This is all like amazing. Talking about taking the long of the swing failure pattern yesterday and recognizing that we were starting to see massive selling volume coming in at the lows. Okay. We finally got some buying. And here you can see I took a, another scope long from $47,000. If we just look at the timestamp so you can see when this was posted in the group as a real, definitely live update. 2246, taking the long from 47 Ken. I'll explain why. So if we add on the, la, 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 the line info, vertical line, 40, 2246, 2246, posted in the group, I was taking that long at 2246. Let's zoom out a little bit and see how that really was calling the exact low pretty much no <laughs> so from basically calling the exact low in the group we've seen a massive move to the upside but i want to give a little bit of insights of why i was doing this obviously trading this on the telepair forty seven thousand and thirty two dollars the low was forty seven thousand nineteen basically the exact low i wanted i want to explain this now so i you can see here i was starting to long for this swing failure pattern and i took one long for the swing failure pattern closed it and then I took the second one off of 47K. Okay, and obviously that one went amazing. And so you have to think, what's the, what's the theory behind this? Why, why would you long so aggressively? Well, in my opinion, you have to remember. Yeah, you have, And it, this is all depending on how much capital you have. Yeah, if you're trading with like, I don't know, you know, you just have to remember not everyone can, can even attempt to do these sort of things. But you're, what you have to remember is how do you get a swing failure pattern? Well, it requires aggressive buying. So somebody has to actually buy at market to move the price back up. Yeah. Otherwise, the, if everyone's just using limit orders, the market doesn't move. If, if you want to get a swing failure pattern, you have to get the market makers moving the market, which is causing a swing failure pattern. Because I found a really funny comment yesterday of somebody saying, is this a double bottom uh, prior to the swing failure pattern? They were looking at this move here and saying, is this a double bottom? So like, this is what the market makers literally want you to think. Of course, it's not going to be a double bottom. We come down, we take the swing failure pattern, pretty extreme move to the upside now. But it all comes from traders like myself of aggressively buying it at the lows. So it's like this situation. Yes, you cannot predict a swing failure pattern per se. You have to see the volume coming in at the time. And you have to have your bigger traders participating in, in market buying it back up, no? Once you've, once you've reached step one, it's kind of like a situation for myself, like on this trade. Hit take profit one, set my stop loss. I can walk away. I've done my job in the market, which was longing the low. And then from here, this is what you have to think about in terms of like the theory behind the trade or like the game theory per se now is once you've got in that trade, let's just remove that now. Once we've got in the trade, we can set the stop loss 
and 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 and, and we've got a, we've got that risk free trade. Yeah, we've got that risk free trade. We've got the entry. We've then got the stop loss and the invalidation. Let the market do whatever the market wants to do. It's going to do one of two things from there. It's going to come back down and stop you out. Okay, it's going to either do this, which actually I would have bought more. I'm not going to lie, I would have bought more at this point because I was trading for a low term time frame idea. But nevertheless, it would have stopped me out at this point. That's just saying, or it done that and um, done what I wanted it to do <laughs> on the short term. Swing for your pattern, the low short squeeze to the upside. I was trading before the, for the swing for your pattern before it even happened. Took my next long at 47k and um, obviously there was a few different reasons of why we could look at confluence here. Another one, but we already had the cipher. We already had the 786. We already had the MPOC. We also had the uh, gap, of, of course, on the CME chart. So another reason why we could argue uh, pretty, you know, the potential for the short squeeze going on, I suppose, because, you know, you have that gap. And we all know Bitcoin is currently in a range. It was in a range between two daily levels and we were literally range bound. Yeah, so swing failure pattern going to fill the gap more likely than not know and we did come up and we filled that gap so that, that, that's like the theory uh behind how i managed to get that pretty epic pretty epic call in the group now you have to admit not many people are going to put themselves on the line like i did there as it's happening right at the moment thinking i'm taking another long people are going to be people probably going to follow what i'm saying and hey if they did i think they're very happy people right now uh but yeah that kind of leaves us to what, where we are right now then, yeah? So where we are right now, I, we're at this really big level of 50, well, we're basically rejecting $53,000, okay? We know $53,000 was our old range low. So naturally we can say that we have that old, if you remember the videos from like last week, we were trading the range from $53,000 to $57,000. Remember that, that literally was the range that we were doing, 53 to 57K. So we can see that we're getting a little bit of potential support flipping into resistance. Currently, though, we could argue this is a little bit of consolidation below resistance. I, I personally would like to see a little bit more of a short squeeze here. Um, I can I can understand like a scalp trader to short 53k. It's a, it's a pretty good short. And I think you'd have already had take profit one and you know, let the rest run potentially. But for for a, a nice swing trade, I, I would personally like to see another move to the upside where arguably we could say the best uh, opportunity then would come in again. I mean, obviously you have the best opportunities back up at 60K, but do, are we going to reach all the way back up to 60K? I think the next sensible place to be aware of would have to be that $55,000, yeah? 50, 55000 uh, again, I'm going to call this a region where you, you do have to look either side of it. I'm not saying that as to the exact dollar. I'm, I'm looking at this definitely 100% as a region. But that 55k region coming coming back up into the CC, POCs, it's, I would just argue that that's the best opportunity. Continue to squeeze up a little bit today. What's the uh, stock market? Fairly, fairly sideways. Uh, oil down 1.7%. We're seeing the DXY hold steady. We're seeing gold and silver up. Yeah, I, I think we can get for another push. Um, this, this is the thing that is, there's no way I would long here. I, I would just never long because you have to think like if you're longing here, you're literally longing into the first SR flip, which is 53 K. Although I personally would like to see another move to the upside here. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't long here. I, I'd let someone else do it. Just, just as like I was saying yesterday, I longed, I longed the absolute low of the move. Like literally, what was it within like, within like ten dollars of the absolute love to move i was happily long in there causing a swing failure pattern but to long here no just like i was saying after the swing failure pattern's done i'm 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 at the mercy of the market now i've got my entry i know where i want it to go and and it's up to the market it's going to stop me out where it's going to hit and at the same here like i'd like to see a push up but there's no way i'm longing here there's just there's just what well, i mean why would why would i <laughs> why would I long into the resistance? I'll, I'll let someone else do it. If they want to push it through, they can push it through from here. But there's just no way I'm getting involved at this, this level for longs. Just, just I wouldn't do it. I have a long from lower. Why would, why would I? It's just this is not a long I would ever take. And uh, so, you know, that that's my opinion on this. Obviously, yeah, there's no way I'd ever long that. I think you had a nice sculpt from 53k if you took it. But obviously, I'd, 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 I'd really like to see that pushed around $55,000 next. I think that offers me the best next trade i suppose um yeah and, and we would we would um, we would we would argue that now that 50k obviously should be support if we come down and lose that looks like a really big uh fake out okay so we call this like a fake out where you get a short squeeze up you come down if you lose that support then you you would imagine you come down for lower levels again um 
So it's, it's, it's fairly simple from here, I believe, in terms of we have a very, we have a very easily defined support. The resistance is a little bit harder to define because obviously we could squeeze that much higher um, or we could, you know, fall down from it. it I, I do feel the resistance is a little bit harder to define. And this is why you might wait for these steps of confirmation uh, rather than just like trying to jump into it. You know, the work, one of the worst things you can do is try and short a short squeeze. <laughs> you know, it's very hard to time the top of them. So you generally are going to wait for that bit of confirmation on it because, you know, otherwise you can take quite a lot of losing trades before you get the winning one. Um, but yeah, that, that's what I wanted to talk you through today. It's it's really, I just wanted to talk you through the the, the importance of, of having that plan in the first place. Like I was saying in the group, not every day I, it's not every day I share my plans like that. But, you know, having that plan originally from my personal training journal of wanting to literally long for, you know, try and cause a swing failure pattern. When it happens, I stuck to what I said I was going to do and literally long the swing failure pattern. Again, check the time stance, literally called it the exact low. And knew we had the CME gap. Uh, I also found it pretty funny. This is by no means, uh, you know, I'm just totally bantering. It's just totally fun. But there was obviously people saying that the Bitcoin uh, worst case scenario is like happening right now. And I was like, right, this is this is the Bitcoin short squeeze scenario happening right now. Let's go. <laughs> obviously, just a bit of banter, a bit of fun. But at the end of the day, um, you know, me, this guy longed $47,000. Uh, this guy made $1,300 profit last night. People starting to feel like whales. Uh, think like the whales. Hey, it's, it's, it's good fun. No, exactly as predicted. And uh, oh, yeah, I was also posting it. You, know, you gotta, you gotta, if you're not following on Twitter, give us a follow over on Twitter, as I was saying here. I don't always long Bitcoin, but when I do, I make sure to bring the market up with me. Can anyone beat that entry? Again, that, that was posted nearly nine, 10 hours ago. Um, literally longing gets that low. Now we, now we see it back above. Uh, fifty-two thousand dollars. If you're following on Twitter and you felt a FOMO, you could have you could have FOMO'd in on my tweet and hey, made some made some money, I suppose. Not that anyone should do that, and of course, not not financial advice in this video. But um, quite sure he is the best of all of us. The things he the things he pulls are off next level. Cue the Bond theme. Nobody does it better. Anyway, there we go. So yeah, that's that's the current long that I have there. Um, I see other people long from like forty-eight thousand dollars holding that. They were holding that one. Other people longing around 47, 47,000. Surprise, surprise. Nice entries, though. But um, yeah, that, 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 that's what I wanted to talk you through. I, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope that you've talked, I've talked you through in a in a way which wasn't like brag. I hope I haven't come across as brag. I've taught you through like why I thought these things were going to happen. Okay, so why I was looking for that swing failure pattern or why I wanted to long to actually try and cause one. Uh, why I then envisioned... Again, it's not necessarily being able to predict. You you have to have a certain amount of confidence off these things. The safest entry, of course, was not doing what I done and causing it, but just longing as soon as you had it. Okay, as soon as you have a swing for your pan, you have a very, very, very easy, easy, easy trade. Um, so you, who cares whether you're like me or not? Like you had the easy trade at the end of it, swing for your pan off the lows. Again, um, you know, hit your take profit one on it, put your stop loss. Let it go for as long as it wants to go. Uh, I mean, I'm looking for 55k if it wants to come down, but if it wants to stop here at 53k, it stops here at 53k. We know the next pretty important support levels. So, um, you know, this is the thing. Sometimes you just got to react. So it's good to have a plan and it's good to be aware of the levels. Of course, that's like 100% needed. But the, at the end of the day, what you need to be good at is the reacting. You know, so it's, you, you know, it's, 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 yeah, you need to be so you need to be able to react to what the market's telling you. Okay, I think that's very important because otherwise you get stuck in a bias. And if you just have a bias where you're like, "This is so bearish, I'm just going to short," and then we start short squeezing, you know, you have to be able to you know you have to have the the um, what's the right word? You have to have that like non ego view of the market of like accept when you're wrong and be able to adapt. You know, if you're always looking for the same trade. And it's clearly not going your way. You know, you know, you have to be able to stop and, and realize, OK, let's stop doing this. Let's do what the market's doing. You know, <laughs> it's pretty obvious, but some people I've, I've, I think struggle with it. So, um, yeah, that, that was today's video. I've taught you through how, why I longed that at uh, the next level of resistance, the next level of support. And then we go we go from there, really. You no. Know? Um, Obviously, if what I would say, if we lose support, we're looking to break this low and head down lower. And if we break 55K, well. I guess our next level would be back up at that 50 old, 57 old K old range high. Um, 
we come back up and take those highs we're looking towards 58k then the short squeeze would be in full effect so level to level you know you don't need to get massively bullish here again this is not a place i would long so there's no i'm not necessarily being i just wouldn't long here uh but you know you got your next level of resistance above you. You got your next level of support below you for two two next trades. Again, I need to end this video. Of course, of course, of course, I need to end this video with the uh, lovely, lovely, lovely non financial advice disclaimer. So, of course, no financial legal advice. Do your own research. To do the entertainment video only. You all know the the disclaimers by now because people love to sue. And there you go. That's the disclaimer. Hope you've enjoyed and. Um, yeah, and I'll, I'll say this, if you've enjoyed, smash up the likes and I'll, I'll bring you a live stream. I'll bring you a, a, a live stream where we can talk through, I don't know, something that's happening in the time. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> There's that. Hope you've enjoyed. Thank you ever so much. And there we go. Exactly as predicted. Cheers.